so how do I look? I don't think I like the scarf. I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't. It's hmm. keeping my neck warm since we're having unusually cold weather here in Arkansas. Arkansas. Um, this morning, I'm looking good and looking fine and it took me two hours to get ready to start my day. And here's why. Uh, five days out of the week, I wake up early, I drink my coffee, I get on my social media, I check out all the things I need to check out. Basically, I play Angry Birds all day. Okay. Um, then I get ready for work and then I work all day and then I come home and I play with the kids and figure out filming and fun stuff. But today is one of my days off and I'm super excited to get ready to go apply for a new job. What is this new job about? Well, you're gonna find out. Hello. I just got back from my interview slash application, which was no paper application and more of an interview. And I picked this location for a reason because I want to tell you a little bit about my story. Today we are visiting a graveyard. Just real quick, it is beautiful to me. So anyway, the job that I was applying for um, was a peer specialist slash recovery coach. I am an addict. I like to refer to myself as a person in recovery. That's kind of the new age way of referring to yourself. And um, some people go really, really hard in life. They do heroin, they do crack, they do methamphetamines, they do pills. I mean, any drug out there, you name it. This could have easily been me in one of these uh, graveyards, grave site. Anyway, yeah, I'm an addict. Six months ago, I, seven months ago, my brother-in-law approached me and my husband approached me and told me to get help. If I didn't stop and get help and take myself to rehab, I was going to have my kids taken away and my husband was probably going to divorce me. <clears throat> I've been, or was, no, still am. I'm a struggling addict. I don't, I don't actively use. I've got six months and 15 days behind me. So six and a half months, clean time. <laughs> anyway, my journey as an addict started when I was 17, when my dad passed away, and I just couldn't handle it. I didn't grieve properly. Um, I was already smoking pot, which is a whole nother opinion about drugs, but it wasn't the pot. It was my immediate run towards heroin. And I didn't use it for very long. It only took me about, oh, a week and a half to go from just being a pot smoking kid and drinking a little bit to getting arrested the night that I actually planned. I planned on robbing a convenience store and purchasing a needle. That's right. I said at 17 years old, I don't want to live life anymore. I'm going to get a needle. It is so ridiculous how cold it is outside. I just, <laughs> it's not even freezing, but I am cold. Um, and I have, if I don't get this off of my chest and tell what I want to talk about, I might not do it at all. So let's pick up where I left off. Um, when I decided to um, rob a convenience store. It didn't work out well for me. I uh, 
it was a it was a convenience store I don't know if I can name names about places but um, let's just say their name is not 11 7 and um, at the time they had a little tip jar and me and the guy that I was hanging out with that I was doing the heroin with decided that it would be a good idea to steal that tip jar and it was a really dumb idea to steal a tip jar get in the car and then try to count the money right there in the parking lot well the uh, lady working she was smart she followed us out to the car ripped the keys out from the ignition and called the cops which then you know landed me in jail so that was my first time yeah that was my first time in jail and um They sent me to prison, and it wasn't very long, um, but because I got booked in the middle of the night, and I was high on heroin, they put me in the detox uh, pod, and I stayed there with a woman who, my arm's getting tired, how do y'all hold these things so long? Um, there was a woman who was detoxing from heroin and she was puking and shitting herself and rolling around in her cot. And I thought then, oh my God, I never want to end up like this lady. So my mom came to pick me up in the morning and when she picked me up, got me out of jail, um, set my court dates and all that court crap. Uh, she gets me in the car and she's like, Dina, she's like, you can either go get help and we've got you set up for help or you can get out of the car and be homeless and never see us again. Well, I was 17 and my dad had passed away like nine months prior to that. Um, I wasn't doing very well in school and I figured, well, you know what? Maybe my mom's right. So let me take her advice. So off to rehab I went. I spent 14 days in a rehab facility and then I moved to Boca Raton, Florida. And I spent eight and a half months clean living in a halfway house. Now, I was living the life in Florida. I worked two to three jobs. I was learning who I was at the time. Um, figured I would finish school. Uh, made some good friends. And uh, just kind of worked. And I think that's where my work ethic comes from. Because I was on my own at, while well, I was 18 by this point. Um... So, I worked two to three jobs. I had a place of my own. Um, I moved out from the halfway house and started using again. This time it was drinking. And it became a real big problem. And when my family came down to visit me, um, it was quite a shock to them because they thought I was living in a halfway house. And when they got down to Florida and discovered that I was no longer living there, and they had to hunt me down uh, was a major disappointment to them um, so that was then so let's fast forward for the next 15 years um, yeah I like opiates and when you can't get your hands on heroin you turn to the next thing synthetic heroin um, I don't want to talk about the actual drug use because that's in the past, you know. Um, the other day I did a little bit of a vlog about what defines you and me being a drug addict doesn't define me, but it's definitely part of who I am. Um, it is a struggle. I no longer worry about actually wanting to use. Um, I worry about how to live life. And my life has changed so much in the last six months. It is unrealistic. Um, I'm still slinging pancakes. That's what I do. I'm good at that. I like people. I like making cash daily. But I'm also 36 years old with two kids and a husband. And, you know, even though it's young, um, there's a lot of things that I want to do in life. I want to travel the world. I want to have nice vacations. I want to drive nice vehicles. I, I, there's materialistic things that I would like to acquire. Now, mind you, you could take it all away tomorrow, okay? Because <laughs> I've lost enough material things in my life that I don't have much value for them. 
but what I have gained, what I have worked hard for, I take care of. As a matter of fact, later on, you're gonna come with me to vacuum this sucker. Now, this uh, vehicle right here, it's a Dodge Journey, it's a 2013. Um, it's the nicest vehicle I've ever owned, and I'm proud of it. And I worked hard for it, and I'm still paying for it, of course, you know. Um, so even though I might not wanna sling pancakes the rest of my life, it does pay the bills, cause I'm good at what I do. Um, There's going to be more stuff about recovery in the future. Um, I kind of started a story about how I got into rehab this time and kind of wandered off to my past. Um, and let me bring you back up to speed. Six, seven and a half months ago when my brother-in-law, my husband approached me, um, it was the same situation. It was Dina, go get clean, go get help, or you're going to... Um, we're going to call DHS on you and you're going to lose your kids and you're going to lose your husband. So I went to rehab and it's been a life changer this time. Um, what has really, really, really worked for me was actually, um, it was my outpatient program. And about a month into being an outpatient, one of one woman who has believed in me from day one has really pushed me to pursue being um, a peer specialist. She sees something in me that I'm still having a hard time seeing in myself, um, but that's what makes her a great person. I think that's something that makes her special is that she can see the spark in somebody. She can see what they're good at and what they could be good at. And she says, hey, Dina, you're gonna go do this. And um, I like it. I like it enough to know that a um, it gets a career choice to be a peer specialist or recovery coach. Here in Arkansas, there's not very many opportunities to be somebody that can work in recovery and help other people. Um, I like to give back, but without having to give all of myself. Um, so back to that whole interview thing. Um, the only thing that sucks about it is it's second shift. And I work day shift now. I mean, my, me and my husband's schedule is just right. Um, I work from 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. And I get up early in the morning. I go to bed early at night. Uh, we are like two ships passing in the night. Uh, this particular position is from like 12 o'clock in the afternoon till 8.30 at night, which means not only would I not see my husband at the end of my day, well, my work day now, um, I wouldn't see my kids. And I don't know if that's good for us. I don't think it's a good choice. So, even though I want to do something other than slinging pancakes, I don't want to sacrifice my values for money. Um... Money's money, you know? Yeah, you need it to survive, but if you have everything that you need in life, you know, clothes on your back, food in your belly, shelter over your head, you're living a lot better than a lot of people in the world. Holy crap, this video is 10 minutes long. <sighs> so, hey, that video was pretty long, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I know it's pretty long and pretty detailed and there's a lot more that I wanted to say, but I also feel like videos should be kept a little bit shorter. Um, thanks for letting me share my story. Uh, there'll be more to come tomorrow. Okay, bye. I will never slip or stun, I'm a soldier These shoulders hold up so much, they won't budge I never fall or fold up, I'm a soldier Even if I collarbones crush or crumble I will never stumble